Okay, in this video I wanted to do um, stuff on CBRN warfare, but particularly the radiological aspect, which is the R. Now, CBRN, as I've said before, is a bit of a weird term, because it used to be NBC or ABC, depending on which country was using it. Atomic Biological Chemical or Nuclear Biological Chemical, which makes lots of sense. Nuclear weapons, biological weapons, and chemical weapons. However, the radiological gets thrown in because they wanted to sort of show you the difference, I guess, or um, separate weapons that create radiation on purpose with the radiation being the intent of the weapon from nuclear weapons that create radiation as a byproduct. To me, that doesn't really make a difference because it's kind of like saying if you had sort of heat-proof gloves or heat-resistant gloves, it wouldn't matter if, you know, what that source of heat was as long as it did its job. But anyway, radiological, CBRN, chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear is a kind of currently used term. So, let's have a look at what radiological weapons actually are. So, the purpose of a radiological weapon is to create radiation with the intent that radiation kills or is used as an area denial weapon. Unlike nuclear weapons, where obviously a thermonuclear weapon, the point of that is that you have a big explosion that wipes lots of stuff out. The radiation from that is a uh, byproduct. As time has gone on, nuclear weapons, as they become higher yield, have actually become you know, less radioactive. Early atomic bombs are far more radioactive than sort of modern hydrogen bombs, even when the bombs become much bigger, because less of that energy is wasted creating radiation and more of it creates the actual blast itself. So, obviously, radiological weapons kind of do the opposite. The point of a radiological weapon is to have a very small explosion, but to actually make lots and lots and lots of radiation. So, the neutron bomb is probably the most famous version of that, and I think its official name was something like high yield radiation weapon or um, it was something radiation weapon um, I think it might have been enhanced radiation weapon ERW but the neutron bomb is the name everybody knows it as and the point of the neutron bomb was that they would essentially have a bomb that could have been used if the Soviets were pushing into the west all the bombs would have been dropped um, and all of the soldiers and tanks would have been exposed to massively high doses of radiation um, the idea was that without destroying lots of um, the middle of Europe, you just created... Because you could, in theory, design a neutron bomb that had um, a very short half-life. So you have immense radiation when it first goes off, and then not much radiation after that. So um, the idea was that when the commies are pouring over, you'd have the neutron bombs dropped on them and then they'd become very ill and die, uh, but you wouldn't do much damage to West Germany, for example. The issue being that radiological weapons, it was found, didn't quite work like that. You see, there's a thing called the walking ghost syndrome, and what this is, is basically, if you've been exposed to a massive amount of radiation, you'll initially be quite sick, then for a couple of days, potentially, you could feel absolutely fine and normal until you suddenly drop dead. And the reason for this is, basically, you're ill when you're first exposed to the radiation, it scrambles your genes, then what happens is because you've been exposed to so much radiation, your cells can't reproduce. So obviously what happens normally is your cells die off and are reproducing constantly. When you've been exposed to that much radiation, when your old cells die off, no new cells have been made and then you're dead. Because there's no, not been any new cells to replace them. So the issue was with the walking ghost syndrome is you potentially had enemy soldiers that knew they were going to die but had a couple of days left to live, so then, you know, they thought that their rampage would be incredible, you know, any civilians come across murdered, um, you know, and they, they'd ferociously actually try and keep pushing forwards regardless of what happened. So, radiological weapons weren't ever actually deployed for very long because of those reasons. The neutron bomb was designed and implemented, but again, that normal conventional nuclear weapons, what everybody agreed upon, was good. There's also lots of anti-nuclear pressure where radiological weapons were seen as far nastier than regular nuclear weapons by people, so there was more opposition to them. So, actual radiological weapons in a military sense aren't very practical to be used, although there has been a couple of times and people have said it would be good, you know, if there were certain areas where terrorists constantly smuggle stuff through to irradiate that area so they can't travel across that area without dying. But for the most part, that's not... Um, you know, ever been implemented anywhere. That's quite similar to what Douglas MacArthur's plan was during the Korean War, was to detonate, detonate a load of nuclear um, explosions sort of along the parallel, 
and then the idea was that the North Koreans wouldn't be able to cross um, and keep attacking the South, so you'd wipe out a lot of them with the initial bombing and then you'd irradiate such a wide area that the Chinese and North Koreans couldn't push into South Korea. Uh, they didn't give him, obviously, his thing, and now we have North Korea that still exists today because they didn't get rid of him there and then. Anyway, I'm going off the point now. So, however, how you might see a radiological weapon employed against people generally is probably with a dirty bomb. So, the idea of a dirty bomb is basically where you get a lot of materials that are radioactive, and then you simply get an actual explosive and use the explosive to kind of spread radiation far and wide. This would not be effective in a military use, but it would be very effective as a sort of terror weapon. Um, so terrorists could you detonate a dirty bomb in the middle of a capital city, and in big areas of that city would have to be evacuated because there would be a very high radiation level there. Could potentially, because it's not um, a low half-life device, potentially it could take you know hundreds to thousands of years for that radiation to clear. So you could kind of have a Chernobyl no-go zone in the middle of um, a capital city. So it'd be very appealing to terrorists if they could actually do it, but again, I don't think anybody's ever really tried it. Now and again, you will hear news stories of um, sort of dangerous radioactive materials that have been stolen, potentially with this happening, but often they're recovered or just go missing, so who knows where they are, but that's the point. But, um, a dirty bomb would be far more effective um, than the actual neutron bomb in terms of if it was being used by terrorists compared to um, the mili military uses of radiological weapons. However... Why I don't like the term radiological necessarily applied to everything is because, for example, NBC suits now are now called CBRN suits, the R in it standing for radiological, despite the suits giving you no radiological protection or whatever. You could argue that an NBC suit gives you some nuclear protection in the sense that some of the nuclear radiation, like the alpha radiation, would be stopped by the suit, and it would certainly do that. Obviously it's not going to stop the gamma radiation and the nuclear fireball from engulfing you, but it would do that. But when you say an uh, NBC suit has radiological protection properties and it certainly can't stop gamma radiation at all, um, then you see it seems a bit silly to apply it to that. So I can understand why they use it in the term CBRN warfare, you know, referring to actual weapons designed to cause radiation rather than nuclear explosions, but um, it is a bit odd in that regard. So there you go, that's radiological weapons. Um, there's no real way to protect yourself from them if they're ever used, just like nuclear weapons. But they're quite an interesting thing, I think, to look up in just the sheer sort of horrible things man can do to each other. But yeah, they've not really ever been used.